Have you ever wondered why doctors, specialists, rheumatologists rarely discuss the ideal diet for managing Sjogren's Syndrome? In this video, I'm going to share with you the most effective dietary practices for managing Sjogren's Syndrome based on insights gained from years of treating patients with autoimmune conditions. Whether you're dealing with consistently dry mouth, eye discomfort, or other chronic symptoms, these tips are tailored to help reduce inflammation and provide real sustainable relief. Hi, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasri, founder of the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic. We help solve complex inflammation in thousands of patients who have successfully avoided medications. Symptoms and conditions such as Sjogren's Syndrome are in fact reversible. And this may sound surprising when you examine intestinal inflammation in autoimmune disease through the lens of gut microbiome, it becomes clear that most inflammation is driven by gut health issues. If you're curious about our approach and want to hear about our success stories, check the link in the description or visit mgiclinic.com to schedule a discovery call with me. I'll provide you with some useful tips to help get you started. Also, you can find numerous success stories from real patients on our site offering insights that you can apply to your own life. Let's dive in. Here's a 2024 study that explores how three women with Sjogren's Syndrome adopted a plant-based nutrition protocol, emphasizing leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables, and omega-3 fatty acids. Remarkably, nearly all symptoms resolved within weeks. This other study from 2022 examined and compared the gut microbiota and fecal metabolome of Sjogren's Syndrome patients in healthy controls and found a relationship between gut dysbiosis and metabolic disturbances. And this 2020 study looks at the connection between the gut microbiome and autoimmune dry eyes and Sjogren's syndrome and discusses how prebiotics and probiotics can impact dry eye management. In this video, we're gonna explore the ideal diet for managing Sjogren's syndrome. Whether you're dealing with chronic dryness, fatigue, or just trying to improve your overall comfort and energy levels. Finding the right foods can be challenging, especially if you're aiming to avoid medications like immunosuppressants or steroids. Over the years, I've helped many patients reduce their Sjogren's symptoms and manage inflammation naturally without relying on medications that only mask the symptoms. But what sets this approach apart? Many specialists tell you that Sjogren's is something you just have to live with or manage with temporary fixes that don't address the root cause. However, much of my experience and research suggests that much of this conventional advice overlooks a critical piece of the puzzle. And in this video, I'll share with you the best dietary strategies for managing Sjogren's Syndrome, common mistakes to avoid, and how to achieve lasting relief. The first major point I'd like to make is the importance of phytonutrients in Sjogren's Syndrome. There is substantial evidence highlighting the critical role phytonutrients play in managing and healing autoimmune conditions like Sjogren's Syndrome. Here's a 2021 study that reviews the potential benefits of using natural bioactive compounds such as polyphenols to alleviate dry eye and dry mouth symptoms in Sjogren's Syndrome. Another 2021 study explores the therapeutic use of green tea polyphenols on salivary gland dysfunction in Sjogren's Syndrome. And here's one from 2020 discussing the therapeutic effects of catapol, a compound from the herb R. radix, on primary Sjogren's Syndrome. There are numerous studies showing the impact of phytonutrients on inflammation and immune function, particularly in conditions like Sjogren's Syndrome. And I could spend hours diving into the science, but, but here's a quick overview of what really matters. Phytonutrients are potent plant compounds found in foods like fruits, vegetables, and herbs that play a key role in reducing inflammation. They include antioxidants, flavonoids, and other micronutrients that are essential for human health. When it comes to managing Sjogren's Syndrome, optimizing the intake of these phytonutrients can be transformative in reducing systemic inflammation and improving dryness symptoms. Phytonutrients are divided into key categories such as terpenes, phenols, chlorophyll, and prebiotics, among others. Each one of these groups has specific benefits for modulating inflammation and supporting immune balance. Many people with autoimmune conditions like Sjogren's have deficiencies in these compounds, which disrupts the delicate balance between immune system, the gut, and overall health. The goal is to maximize and diversify your phytonutrient intake from whole foods. And by doing so, you'll provide your body with the resources it needs to combat the underlying causes of Sjogren's inflammation. A diet low in phytonutrients leaves you vulnerable to chronic inflammation and worsening Sjogren's symptoms. On the other hand, a diet rich in these compounds can naturally help manage inflammation and support overall health. I recommend incorporating phytonutrients into every meal and consider every meal as an opportunity to heal and nourish your immune system. This is particularly crucial for those dealing with Sjogren's syndrome because the right foods can help you balance your gut microbiome and reduce systemic dryness and fatigue. The takeaway is simple. Phytonutrients are key players 
and managing Sjogren's syndrome more effectively. If your diet lacks these vital compounds, it's no surprise that your symptoms will persist. Maintaining a healthy gut microbiome is essential for reducing inflammation, and phytonutrients are a major component in achieving that balance. The second point I'd like to make is nutritional needs and macro counting for Sjogren's disease. In recent years, intermittent fasting has gained popularity as a way to reduce inflammation. But when it comes to managing autoimmune conditions like Sjogren's, fasting may do more harm than good. In fact, a recent 2024 study shows that intermittent fasting increases the risk of cardiac death by a staggering 91%, and people are risking their health by avoiding food altogether. Many people still believe that fasting is a solution, especially for inflammation. While short-term fasting may provide some relief by reducing the metabolic load on the gut, long-term fasting leads to new problems such as muscle and weight loss, thyroid dysfunction, increases in stress hormones like cortisol, disrupted sleep, nutritional deficiencies, and digestive issues such as nausea, bloating, poor appetite, and persistent fatigue. When these problems develop, eating becomes even more challenging. You might feel very bloated, gassy, low energy after meals, and these symptoms can deter you from eating adequately in the future, creating a vicious cycle that's hard to break, especially if you're underweight and have Sjogren's. Being underweight with Sjogren's with a body mass index BMI of 18 or lower can be particularly problematic. You can easily calculate your BMI using the BMA calculator that you can find on our clinic's website. You just enter in your height and your weight. If your BMI is below 18 and you have Sjogren's syndrome, you are at serious risk. And I've treated patients with a BMI as low as 13, which can be very severe. When you have a low BMI and Sjogren's syndrome, it means your body is in a catabolic state, breaking down protein rather than building it up, which limits your body's ability to heal and manage inflammation effectively. The key to managing Sjogren's syndrome is not avoiding food, but rather focusing on reducing inflammation while maintaining a balanced nourishing diet. But unfortunately, many people become discouraged when they can't find the right foods, leading them to skip meals, which can only make things worse. When it comes to finding the optimal macronutrient balance for Sjogren's, focus on carbs, fats, and proteins. If inflammation reduction is your goal, I recommend a macronutrient ratio of approximately 50% fats, 25% carbs, and 25% proteins. Although this ratio isn't backed by studies, it's based on my experience working with numerous patients who achieved positive results with Sjogren's. If you're looking to lose weight, reducing carbs and fats while increasing protein may be beneficial. Conversely, if you need to gain weight, increasing your calorie intake and finding a better balance between carbs and fats is essential. Tracking these macronutrients will require some effort, but it's well worth it. Getting your nutrition right for Sjogren's can make a significant difference in your long-term health and symptom management. The balance of macronutrients, carbs, fats, and proteins plays a significant role in managing Sjogren's syndrome. Your gut microbiome, which is key in regulating immune responses, thrives on specific nutrients, especially carbohydrates. However, not all carbs are created equal. You have bad bacteria and fungi that in the presence of sugars, carbs, and fiber can produce inflammation. Simple sugars like glucose and fructose fuel harmful bacteria and fungi worsening inflammation in conditions like Sjogren's. Processed starches, often found in flour, also do the same. On the flip side, complex or resistant starches promote the growth of beneficial bacteria, and fiber selectively nurtures good bacteria, which is crucial for maintaining a healthy immune balance. You may be thinking, why not cut out carbs altogether? Well, that's where the carnivore diet comes in. The carnivore diet for Sjogren's is entirely meat-based, eliminating fiber and carbs completely while including essential electrolytes. The carnivore diet for Sjogren's eliminates all carbohydrates, including fiber, lactose, starches, and sugars. Unlike keto or low-carb diets that might still include carbs, a strict carnivore approach cuts them out entirely. By following this diet strictly, you eliminate the primary fuel for harmful bacteria in the gut. This approach is especially beneficial during periods of heightened inflammation or flare-ups. However, while the carnivore diet can offer short-term relief, it is not necessarily sustainable long-term for everyone. The original paleo diet, which evolved into the carnivore diet, was more plant-based with occasional meat, aligning more closely with the phytonutrient-rich approach that I generally recommend. So while going carnivore might help during acute flares, it may not be ideal for long-term gut and immune health. And I have a dedicated video to discussing this topic more in detail, so be sure to check that out if you're curious. Another approach for managing Sjogren's is the specific carbohydrate carbohydrate diet, or SCD diet, aims to reduce inflammation by eliminating hard to digest carbohydrates that can ferment in the gut, leading to bacterial overgrowth. The SCD diet for Sjogren's eliminates complex carbs like disaccharides and polysaccharides that contribute to bacterial 
imbalances and flare-ups. In my experience, addressing gut microbiome issues with targeted probiotics and supporting them with a diverse array of phytonutrients is a more effective approach than the SCD alone. The SCD for Sjogren's often delivers inconsistent results and lacks precision. Another diet often recommended for managing gut-related conditions like Sjogren's syndrome is the low FODMAP diet. This diet focuses on limiting fermentable carbohydrates that can cause gut discomfort and trigger inflammation. FODMAPs are short-chain carbohydrates that are poorly absorbed, leading to fermentation and gut issues. The low FODMAP diet for Sjogren's involves an elimination phase followed by a reintroduction phase to identify specific triggers. So with so many diets restricting carbs, it's natural to wonder which one actually works. The challenge is that many of these diets don't address the root cause, the gut microbiome dysfunction. The overgrowth of bacteria that processes carbs leads to the production of harmful metabolites. Conditions like SIBO and Candida are examples of this, with overgrowth of bacteria and fungi that disrupts the immune balance. You have a dysfunctional gut microbiome introduced to carbs, sugars, and fiber, which leads to inflammation. While these Sjogren's diets focus on restricting problematic carbs, they often overlook long-term microbiome health. Ultimately, they provide only temporary relief, delaying the need to address the underlying gut issues. And that brings me to my third point. The ideal Sjogren's syndrome diet should be microbiome specific. When it comes to managing Sjogren's syndrome, it's crucial to understand that simply avoiding certain foods doesn't get to the heart of the issue, gut microbiome dysfunction. The only way to effectively manage this condition is by addressing the root cause through targeted phytonutrients and specialized probiotic formulations. Crafting the perfect diet for Sjogren's requires both a strategic approach and a deep understanding of how the gut interacts with the immune system. This is where our mind-gut immunity approach comes into play. We begin by recalibrating the gut microbiome using precision probiotics. These aren't your average store-bought probiotics. They're clinically backed and specifically designed for conditions related to gut health. You don't need high CFU counts, multiple strains, or refrigeration. All you need are four precise strains that create a protective biofilm in the gut, helping to keep harmful bacteria at bay. Once we've established these healthy colonies, the next step in Sjogren's is maintaining them with phytonutrients, which are primarily found in plant-based foods. These compounds are essential for reducing inflammation and supporting immune balance. Now, certain proteins can trigger immune responses, leading to increased inflammation, which is especially concerning for those with autoimmune conditions like Sjogren's. Some complex proteins may provoke flare-ups, so it's important to be mindful of them. However, it's easy to go through extremes with dietary restrictions. For example, while a vegan or strictly plant-based diet can be beneficial for some, it might be too restrictive or lacking in essential nutrients for others. The vegan diet for Sjogren syndrome is a plant-based regimen that excludes all animal products including meat, dairy, eggs, and honey. It focuses on a wide variety of plant-based foods to meet nutritional needs. One major issue with the vegan diet for Sjogren's is that many people on the vegan diet don't consume enough protein, leading to protein calorie malnutrition, which is a serious problem when trying to heal inflammation, especially in the gut. Your body needs amino acids, and protein should make up about 25% of your daily intake. Another pitfall is relying too heavily on vegan or plant-based foods that are often filled with unhealthy processed ingredients like fake meats, fake cheeses, and additives with harmful chemicals. This approach doesn't deliver the results my clients need. A more balanced and sustainable option could be the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet is based on traditional eating patterns from countries bordering the Mediterranean Sea and it emphasizes whole unprocessed foods, prioritizing plant-based ingredients, healthy fats, and lean proteins for Sjogren's disease. One limitation of the Mediterranean diet for Sjogren's disease is that it doesn't provide a reliable way to track your phytonutrient intake. Additionally, it's crucial that 50% of your daily calories come from omega omega fats, which are essential for gut microbiome health. While the Mediterranean diet does feature many beneficial foods, the inconsistency in nutrient tracking can lead to imbalances that hinder progress. For my clients, we use a more precise approach by focusing on phytonutrient-rich diet. We meticulously track carbs, fats, proteins, and micronutrients daily to ensure that the diet is fully optimized and supporting the gut microbiome. This level of targeting is essential for effectively managing autoimmune inflammation and promote long-term healing from short syndrome. The fourth concept in managing Sjogren's syndrome is understanding and tracking individual food sensitivities. When it comes to Sjogren's, the right diet must consider the unique food triggers. I've dedicated an entire video to food sensitivity testing for Sjogren's syndrome, where I discuss the most effective tests and how to interpret the results. It's crucial for any diet plan to address personal food aversions, sensitivities, and allergies, and the simplest yet most effective way to track these triggers is by keeping a food diary. I understand that this may seem tedious, but it's a non-negotiable step for our clients. And one thing 
thing to keep in mind during Sjogren's flare-ups is nearly every food might feel like an issue. However, as you start to heal, you may find that foods that were previously problematic become tolerable again. And this is why it's essential to regularly monitor and update your food sensitivities because they can change over time as your Sjogren's improves. So there's four basic types of tests. You have the skin prick test, you have the serum IgE test, and these are your traditional allergy tests. You have the serum IgG4 test and the newer mediator release test, which are more sensitivities. I frequently review these results for my Sjogren's clients, guiding them on what the findings mean for their diet and overall health. If you're interested in a deeper dive into interpreting food sensitivity tests for Sjogren's syndrome, I've got a detailed video that covers the different types of tests, their advantages and disadvantages, and the best times to get tested. For instance, it's not ideal to get a test during a flare-up due to the high likelihood of false positives. Testing when you're in a more stable situation provides a clear picture of what's truly causing the sensitivities. The AIP diet is designed to help manage autoimmune diseases by reducing inflammation and promoting gut health. It's a stricter version of the paleo diet and focuses on limiting potential dietary triggers of inflammation and autoimmunity. The diet typically progresses through several phases. First, you have an elimination phase where you're eliminating all the foods that may cause inflammation or immune reactions. These can include things like grains, legumes, dairy, eggs, nuts, seeds, nightshades. And then you have a reintroduction phase where you gradually reintroduce these eliminated foods one by one to identify which triggers are present for your symptoms. And this helps personalize the diet to each individual person. Then there's a maintenance phase where you can maintain a diet and avoid the triggers while focusing on nutrient-dense anti- Same is also true for a low histamine diet. The only reason I'm mentioning it here is that it often makes its way into conversations about inflammation. And the idea here is that you avoid foods that trigger histamine commonly, but it doesn't address the gut microbiome component and it's not specific to each individual since every person has different triggers. I have several videos comparing the phytonutrient diet to each of the individual diets I mentioned here today. So check out the description below to see those videos videos because I go way in depth into some of these diets and why they fail and what you can look out for. The key points of a low histamine diet include avoiding high histamine foods like aged cheeses, fermented foods, processed meats, alcohol, vinegar, certain fish, and avoiding histamine liberators, which means avoiding foods that release histamine stored in the body such as tomatoes, strawberries, eggplants, spinach, avocados, certain nuts. And then you also want to avoid foods that have biogenic amines, and these are things like bananas, chocolates, and certain citrus food. These inhibit histamine degradation. Here are the principles of an ideal Sjogren's syndrome diet. They need to include phytonutrients, I like the phyto diet. They need to meet macro nutritional requirements. They need to be microbiome specific and take into account food sensitivities. At the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic, we spend considerable time developing custom plans for each individual based on these principles. We also provide coaching to ensure accountability and compliance, which is why we achieve consistently great results compared to practices focused solely on medication for Sjogren's syndrome. We teach Sjogren's patients how to manage their diet from home, offering meal plans, food guides, recipes, and grocery lists, and the support ensures that our clients are never lost and can manage their condition effectively from anywhere. If you struggle with Sjogren's syndrome and have found certain foods that help or certain foods that worsen your symptoms, comment below. I would love to hear about your experiences. All right, that wraps up this session. Be sure to check out my other videos comparing different Sjogren's diets to the Fido diet and how they measure up. And if you found this video helpful, please share it with others. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more content such as this. This is Dr. Dostri with the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.